This is Sky Sports One Live. America's Golden Boy. Oscar De La Hoya's 92 Olympic triumph set him on the way to glory. And De La Hoya has swept all before him, winning five world titles in four weight divisions since turning professional. A magnificent talent, also blessed with a winning smile. A heartthrob, the young star with everything, wealth, fame and reputation. But last time out, this reputation was dented by Ike Corte, a test of De La Hoya's taste for the battle. In the end, he prevailed. What a punch up, though. He's given him every chance. What a fight now in the finish. They've saved it for the last all right here. De La Hoya won, but disappointed himself and his many fans. So he's gone back to basics to rediscover the brilliant spark of his early years. Four years on from Barcelona, Floyd Mayweather won bronze in Atlanta, part of the new generation in American boxing. Since he turned pro, Mayweather has done it all right. Don't let me hear you say lights, taking you nowhere. 20 straight wins bringing him a world super featherweight title by the age of 22. And he too has the personality to match the talent, a new star. So is the golden boy worried the youngsters are coming to claim his glamour? Tonight's your chance to judge. It's one of those big Las Vegas nights. To make it here, you have to be able to put on a show. You have to be the best. And we have the best in world boxing for you tonight. The main event, Oscar De La Hoya defending his WBC World Welterweight title against Oba Carr, Carr's third attempt to break through. And there's the youngster, Floyd Mayweather, making the third defense of his World Super Featherweight title. The opponent, Justin Juco, a late replacement, gifted a fantastic opportunity tonight. The action comes from the Mandalay Bay Hotel in Las Vegas. Hello there, and yes, it is a night for the spectacular. Already one spectacular achievement by Oscar De La Hoya, who tonight takes his career earnings to $100 million by the age of 26. And that's even got Barry McGuigan and Gary Jacobs slightly <laughs> envious. More from them in just a moment or two. When De La Hoya even weighs in for a big fight, it's an event in America. And that was the case again this week. Here's what happened when he came to the scales. No problems for either man making the 147 pound limit and the crowds were out in force to cheer the heartthrob hero now the opponent car surely knows that it is his last chance to make it big two good efforts in world title fights previously but de la hoya intends to make a big statement tonight i'm gonna win by knockout i guarantee you i will i'm gonna go in there and fight and it's not going to go the distance. It's not. I'm going to throw a thousand punches, and I'm going to use my angles. I'm going to uh, use my power, my divine power, my supernatural power, my supernatural uh, the ability to uh, just outthink my opponent and just uh, be mesmerizing that night, upset the boxing world. Cars talked well all week, Barry, but it comes down to De La Hoya. Mm. Tell us why he has so much to prove when he's done so much. Well, I think it was because of his last performance. He was looked to be fragile. Uh, um, Bazooka Quarty put him on the floor, hurt him. But he showed in that fight also his metal, his tenacity. He came back and he done it. And to my mind, he has nothing to prove. He wants to get back to his old form, though. He wants to be a knockout success. Gary. Yeah, I think I just think the last fight is it was it was an inchy peachy fight. It was a 50-50 fight. He didn't shine. He didn't knock him out. And he's been talking like he's going to be knocking everybody out as he's going along. And I think it was just it was a harder fight than he anticipated. Got through it. He did win the fight, and I think he just now escaped through. So tonight we'll wait and see. The world welterweight title fight coming up a little later on, but a really thrilling fight for the WBC World Super Featherweight title in prospect first, featuring the young man who's been creeping up behind De La Hoya, Floyd Mayweather. Adam Smith does the introductions here. 
America's finest from 96 have already become world champions. David Reed, Fernando Vargas, and Floyd Mayweather, the man who may just be their top graduate. 20 fights, 20 wins, and only 22 years old. The WBC super featherweight champion known as Pretty Boy has been dazzling and entertaining. Even taking on the very best like Angel Man Freddy, who he blew away in two rounds. He looks the complete package in the ring, so we went to see what he was like out of it. Another marketing machine or a really unique talent. Floyd Mayweather, the pretty boy. How does the pretty boy steal the show from the golden boy on the 22nd? I mean, I'm not there to steal the show. I'm there to put on a good performance and, and show, the show the world that people, Floyd Mayweather is one of the best fighters in the world. His training in the Big Bear Mountains was one of the most astonishing I have ever witnessed. The usual work was taken to new dimensions. Watch what he did with a skipping rope. Then a host of individual challenges. Before demonstrating his total self-belief. I feel Floyd Mayweather got the best defense and the fastest hands in the sport of boxing. And um, I fight with my mind and not just my heart and, and just out there throwing punches. And I, I, got, I make the right moves and um, I'm just the best fighter all around. Just the total package as far as head movement, the best jab, the best right hand can punch with both hands and, the, and is a boxer puncher. Ugandan Justin Juko has replaced Goyo Vargas as tonight's opponent, and although it's short notice, he's still a world-rated challenger. I love a tough fight because I want to show the world that Floyd Mayweather is the best, and by being the best, you got to beat the best. Mayweather's been so impressive that he can probably claim already to be the name in the superweight division, featherweight division among all the world champions. Not bad for a 22-year-old, but for the opponent tonight, Juko, great self-belief. You know, Mayweather's good, very talented and, and all that, but the guys he's fighting are totally different styles than me. You know, I'm a professor. I, I do things depending on what the, the guy do. So I think it's going to be a good fight. He's quick and strong and fast, but, you know, I'm quick, very strong and very intelligent. So it's going to be a very good chess match in there. You've waited a long time for this chance. It's funny the way it's happened for you, isn't it? It had to come like this. It had to happen like this. They had to call me two days leave it or take it, thinking that maybe I'm off for something, but I've been training for six weeks for a fight. So how better can this, can this be? So, and the good thing is this time I am the underdog. Most of the time since I've, since I've started fighting, I've been there, you know, oh, just in my oh, it's nothing. So seven and a half years, not losing, not having a hard fight, you, sometimes you take it for granted. But now I know, you know, people think I'm the underdog, but I know I'm good. I'm ready, and this is my time. Just watch. And in fairness to Juco, Barry, he realizes he's going to be ha have to be special here mm -hmm. to de derail this bandwagon that's built up around Mayweather. Mm. Well, there's no doubt about it. Uh, I mean, I give Justin Juco a chance against anybody. He's got the power to do that. But Mayweather's on a road. He's an exceptional young fighter. He's fast hands. He's taken on what's been good about him. He's taken on all the top fighters. He has refused nobody. He's beaten them all. He knocked out. Uh, Gennaro Hernandez for the title. He took this guy on his first defense and he battered him. It's and he stopped him in two, two rounds. Round fight. It's sensational two rounds fight. I mean, watch what what Manfredi had done against um, uh, uh, Gatti and uh, Arturo Gatti. He was one of the most destructive punches around. And this guy just took him apart in two rounds. Uh, he's an exceptional fighter. Hand speed, accuracy. But look where his chin is. That's the one where his chin's up in the air. And Ju Justin Duke is a, a substantial puncher himself. But he's proved time and time again that he can do it and do it in style. 15 knockouts in his first 20 professional fights. All wins Floyd Mayweather. Now you might think he's a hot favorite, but we know a man who thinks that Juco has a sneak here. <laughs> Mr. Jacobs, why? I just think he's, got, he's in with a right, he's, he's in with a very good chance. As Barry says, uh, Mayweather, he keep, keeps his chin up. Juco is a, he's a good puncher. 
He's also taking the fight. He was getting ready for another fight anyway. He's taking the fight at 72 hours notice. So he'll be ready and he's up for a big chance. He's just arrived in his lap and he's got nothing to lose from it. And I think he's in with a, a wee sneaky chance. Here he comes on his way out to the ring. And you feel that this short notice will work to his advantage in this fight? I believe so, because basically he's had, he hasn't had time to think about it. He's just got on with it and it's just, it's just arrived in his lap. He's got a chance to fight for the world title. He's building up to it. I'm pleased to say that the fan club from Uganda managed to get there in time, even if it was only 72 hours notice. How do you weigh it up, Barry? Well, I see it as a difficult fight for Mayweather. It's an underdog that he's taken on. He's expected to win, he's expected to win in style. He's got to be cagey with this guy. This guy's a dangerous overhand punch, overhand right hand punch. He's a good left hook on the inside. He can do most things and do most things well. This is a tough fight for him, but I still fancy Mayweather. He's an exception. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's get to ringside in Las Vegas and join our commentary team, Glenn McCrory and first Ian Dark. Thank you very much indeed, Paul. A check on Justin Juco's record there, and it is an impressive one. And having spoken to him on the eve of this fight, at some length I can tell you he is not a bit overawed or phased. In fact, he is absolutely delighted to get this chance. The phone rang on Wednesday with the message to Cornelius Bozer Edwards, the former British world champion, who'll be working his corner. And Justin Juco said, I needed to lose a couple of pounds, but I did that in about five seconds once I knew the chance was coming. And here is... Floyd Mayweather, who has emerged brilliantly on the scene over the last seven months since bidding Gennaro Hernandez in eight rounds to become a world champion. Only 22, a really precocious talent, and voted the fighter of the year by two of the American boxing magazines last year. What an emergence it's been. His dad, Floyd, senior who fought Sugar Ray Leonard and went nine rounds with him always has a lot to say about his son's talent thinks he could beat everybody the one word you always see in every report Glenn of a Floyd Mayweather fight is how fast he is yes he's very fast he's very loose and I think you know he's got this air of confidence about him where he just he seems fearless and I think that's what makes him so good he's very young very very talented but he can't underestimate Justin Jugo because Justin Jugo has been waiting around a long time for this opportunity he's finally got it he'll probably not be the nerves there he's a very good technical fighter and Mayweather just can't be too casual a crowd of 12,000 in here, including stars like Kevin Costner, James Wood, Antonio Banderas, and Robert Wagner. A few others too. Oscar De La Hoya nights are big happenings in the United States, and we are absolutely astonished that there is not one British boxing reporter here. They really are missing out on a story, and Mayweather is a story in himself. Unbeaten in 20 fights, 15 by knockout. Third title defense, his fourth world title fight in just seven months. Burnout danger? Well, I think that there is that possibility, but he's so young and so confident, I don't think they're really worried about that at this stage. They were willing to put him in very, very early with his, his world title fight. Everybody thought that was a risk. And he was terrific in that fight. And then Angel Manfredi, they put him in there thinking that was a, a tough defense, and he blew him away. So really, you know, he's doing everything that's asked of him. The former actor, Michael Buffer, who's about as famous as most of the fighters, is waiting to do his introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to the fabulous Mandalay Bay Resort Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada, where tonight, Bob Arum's top rank incorporated the Las Vegas Hilton and the Mandalay Bay along with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Present an evening of World Championship Boxing. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission and the World Boxing Council. Before we continue, on behalf of Top Rank Incorporated, belated birthday wishes to the greatest matchmaker in boxing history, Hall of Famer Teddy Brenner. The officials appointed for this bout at ringside are WBC supervisor Mr. Frank Quill. The three judges scoring the contest on a 10-point must system will be Anek Hamtamkan, John Keane, and Daniel Fondavila, and your referee in charge of the action when the bell rings, Mitch Halpern. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay Resort Casino of Las Vegas, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, red, and yellow, and weighing 130 pounds. His professional record, an excellent one. 33 victories with 25 knockouts, only two defeats and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, from Masaka, Uganda, here is the challenger, the Ugandan destroyer, Justin Juko. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trimmed with silver, weighing in at 130 pounds also. His professional record stands at a perfect 20 victories without a defeat, including 15 knockouts. And already, at this early stage of his career, he is regarded among the best as pound for pound, one of the best in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, from Grand Rapids, Michigan, presenting the reigning and defending undefeated WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Pretty Boy Floyd Mayweather. Short and sweet from Mitch Halp, and he was the referee that the Tyson camp objected to before the second fight with Holyfield. They got their way, the Tyson camp, and the bloke they got as a replacement, Mills Lane, disqualified Tyson. Served them right. What a chance this is for Justin Juco. He was in training for a fight. He was due to fight next Friday here in Las Vegas in a much smaller fight. And suddenly this opportunity has come up. He's in good condition, though, but he is coming off a defeat. Stopped in 11 by Antonio Hernandez in an eliminator. Mayweather the champion, making his third defense in the black trunks. Perhaps the hottest of the new wave talent around in world boxing. How does Juco cope with him? Juco, in the past one we've seen, he's always had a good jab, but looked vulnerable to right hands over the top. Yes, I think that's one of his problems. When he throws his jab, often brings it down a little bit low. There is lapses in his concentration. He can't afford that in, when he's in with a fighter like Floyd Mayweather. Juco stepping in for Goyo Vargas, the former world champion who pulled out at the last minute, saying he was sick, but HBO, the American TV company, didn't believe it. They said he was out of shape and had gone absent without leave from the camp, and that was a refreshing burst of honesty on the scene. They say he'll never get another opportunity to fight anybody like Mayweather. But what a chance, what a chance for Juco, who's been frustrated for a long, long time, waiting for an opportunity. Quick, isn't he, Mayweather? Very, very quick. Two good punches, left hook and right hand, both landed. It's very quiet, but you were not coming back with very much at all, just waiting for Mayweather. You'll have had precious little time to watch any footage of Mayweather in action and to make the necessary strategic plans. It's caught on the counter, Mayweather so quick to get in with his punches and then away again, he's hard to tag. I mean, those two wins against fighters of the quality of Gennaro Hernandez and Angel Manfredi, I mean, that is absolutely top class, isn't it? Breakthrough work for a youngster. It really is, just, just has no sort of respect for fighters of that caliber, just who had no fear, no respect, just went in and did what he had to do, come away with fine victories. Got the right glove up well there, Juco, to block the attempted left hook from Mayweather. Just looking a little stiff in the opening round, though, Juco. Looks quite tense in there, not getting his punches off. 
Mayweather just starting to work that jab quite well, getting through from time to time. Complacency just could be a problem, possibly for Mayweather, but only possibly. Size. It's not everything. 16 valves, increased torque, stiffer suspension, firmer dampers, extra va va voom. That's all very impressive. But really, you ought to be seeing it in the hands of a master. The new Renault Clio 16 valve. Size matters. Utilize your jab, use some paints on him. Welcome back to the Mandalay Bay Resort. There is Justin Juco in the corner. There's no Freddie Roach there who has been training him, and that's a bit of a mystery because Roach only lives an hour away by flight in L.A. And uh, Ruben Gomez doing the main work in there. I think Cornelius Bozer Edwards might be in there somewhere as well giving advice. He actually won this title in 1981 against Rafael Bazooka Limon in a great performance. Long time ago now. Champion Mayweather in black here, the yellow trunks of late substitute challenger Justin Juco, who had 14 fights in Britain, including a stoppage win over Charles Shepard, the uh, current British and Commonwealth champion. And in Juco's corner between rounds, they wanted him to get busy with his own jab, saying he was waiting too much. And his trainer also said he's got a quick jab, hasn't he? To which Juco replied, yes. And it is very, very quick. Seems to be having trouble with his balance in there. He seems to have tripped over his own feet about three times already, Juco. Yeah, I think he's maybe just a, a little tense. He seemed very relaxed beforehand, but it's different when it, it's time to fight. Maybe a, a few nerves creeping in. Yeah, press conferences are one thing, and the reality of the ring may be another. Mayweather was taken the full 12 rounds in his last defense against a durable Argentinian, Carlos Rios, in front of 12,000 fans in his home city of Grand Rapids, Michigan, which is also the home for Tony Tucker and Buster Mathis, and uh, the great middleweight Stan Ketchel, who was shot dead at 24. Ian, we haven't seen much of this young man Mayweather, but the first thing that's really apparent is how quick he is. Lightning speed, not just with the, the punches, but also to get in and out of range. Just mixing it up to head and body as well. He's the kind of fighter, Mayweather, who makes anyone who's in there with him look ponderous. This was regarded as so much a, of a formality when Juco came in so late that even this hotel, casino, will not issue any odds on the fight. Not even on Juco, who's a huge outsider, of course. Well, you would have thought that Juco is a better fighter than that. And I think that's maybe one of the problems. They don't have to, they shouldn't take Juco too lightly. Another quick left hand from Mayweather, who's dominating at the moment. Juco can't get to work with his trademark left jab, and when he does, it's very easy for Mayweather to just skip back out of range of it. Juco can't get in the fight at the moment. Gets in with a decent-looking right hand there, though. And a left hook to the body, too. Just loosening up a little in the last few seconds of the second. Size. It's not everything. 16 valves, increased torque, stiffer suspension, firmer dampers, extra va va voom. That's all very impressive. But really, you ought to be seeing it in the hands of a master. The new Renault Clio 16 valve. Size matters. Welcome back to Las Vegas. You're looking at action from that second round. Floyd Mayweather still very much in control against Justin Juco here. 
practice he's in control. I think one of the things I like about Mirada is though, there was always the danger that if you're overconfident and really go for it. He hasn't done that. He's, he is showing Chuku a mark of respect. He's just going in behind his jab, looking for the openings. To be honest with you, I don't think anybody really properly heard of Juco when he came in so late. Because we knew all about him. We've seen him a lot of times in Britain and have gained good respect for him. The question is, does he have what it takes to graduate at the highest class? Can he just put a dent in that ring of confidence of Mayweather, who's... Uh, He's quite a cocky kid when you speak to him, Mayweather, but that's only to be expected at 22. He's just ex exuberant. And he, let's face it, he's got a lot of ability to back up the words. Oh, good, those fast hands landing again. Did you go off balance? Heavy looking shot, wasn't it, with the right hand? Just looking a shade bewildered by it at the moment, Juco. Who does need to land with a heavy punch to get the, the respect of Mayweather? To get looking football in the fight. Just looking to see whether Juco's picked up a bit of facial damage. And a heavy looking right hand. Blurring hand speed. Lightning quick puncher, Mayweather. Yes, he does like that punch. He does like to lead with a right hand counter. Not often used that, but uh, he gets away with it well. He must feel as he's in there with a viper almost. I think there is damage by the right eye and on the cheekbone underneath for Juco. A real spring in his step just when he missed there he almost bounced out of range just beginning to step it up a little as well Mayweather who's from a great boxing family of course his dad Floyd was a pro and his uncles Jeff and Roger were fairly big names Jeff who fought to De La Hoya and Roger the so-called Black Mamba, a two-times world champion. Wasn't going to grow up to be a solicitor, was he, with that kind of background? <laughs> he was throwing punches in the crib, Mayweather. Yes, that's quite a, a family of fighters he has. Another good round for Mayweather. It's all Mayweather. Chat with girls and guys online now. Call now for your private conversation. Call Adults Only Chat on 090 6960 6960. That's 090 6960 6960. This service may involve a long call. And welcome back to Las Vegas, which translated means the water meadows. Huge city now. All grown from an oasis in the desert. Fourth round coming up, and it's proving so far to be a very difficult night for Justin Juco. He must have known it would be. He hasn't really had any answers to the speed of Mayweather. We've realized over several fights how Duco has a bad habit of dropping his left hand after the jab And they're really going to try and counter that because he's working his right hand an awful lot near weather I think they see that already as a weakness in Duco Yeah, the youngster has a brilliant boxing brain apart from everything else it seems to me He feels he was robbed at the Olympic Games beaten on a 10-9 computer decision by a Bulgarian in the semi-final he says he would have been the rightful gold medalist 
And he's starting to land with some heavy looking shots now. Doing nothing wrong. He doesn't have, doesn't keep his hands up high, but just moves them when Juve comes in range. Good with his his feet to get out of distance.